Mini Art's a company that sort of launched with a splash back in 2003, and now they're a company that we see all the time with new releases. Some pretty interesting kits too. But one of the things they became very well known for early on was their 135th scale dioramas. Now I've got a couple of those in the stash and I thought it was time to dig one out and see what it's all about and build it. So let's get started. I picked this diorama because I just, well, I just like the look of it. It's quite a nice kit and in fact, after looking at the box art, I decided I'd make my kit look a lot like the one in the box. It actually became quite a fun challenge as you'll see. Time to get the lid off and inside we're greeted with vacuum form parts. Now I haven't seen vacuum form parts for about 30 years and let's just say the last time I saw them, I didn't get along too well. Thankfully underneath that there were some more traditional parts that we expect to find in our kits these days. Uh, these are all the bits that uh, make up the electric power pole on the side of the diorama. Now it's really nicely detailed and sharp and uh, no problems there, but the plastic again was a little bit different to a normal kit. It was quite a bit more flexible. Finally in the bottom of the box we have a single sheet instruction. It's double sided. So on one side we look at the construction of the power pole and we also have a breakdown of the parts and on the other side we have a breakdown of how to assemble the wall onto the base. I guess it's about now any modelers that are used to working with vacuum form kits are going to start cringing. I really didn't know what I was doing here guys, I just made it up as I went along. As you can see I'm trying to uh, smooth out the bricks at the end of the wall and uh, as a consequence I'm getting quite a few holes in the vacuum form parts but um, I figured I could get around that with a bit of filler so I just kept going on with a hobby knife and some sanding sticks and tried my best to get a nice uh, finish on, on the end of the wall. I used to me as Xboxy putty to fill in the gaps around the wall and that worked really well. Um, I actually cut off far more here than I ended up needing. Once it had started to cure I used a toothpick to just sort of basically round it off and make it look a little bit more like mortar, mainly just to try and reduce the amount of sanding I'd have to do later. For gluing the pillars to the wall and the wall to the base I used this new glue to me from VMS called Flexi. 5k ca it's an absolutely amazing glue works great with resin parts as well it's very easy and we it's so thin you can just use capillary action to get the glue exactly where you want it it's highly recommended to finish off the joins between the uh, supports and the wall i use some vallejo plastic putty which i find to be a really good putty for general purpose work Given the nature of the different plastics used in this kit, I wasn't sure if the usual polyurethane base primers that I used would actually stick very well. So I elected to use some AK lacquer base primer for both the base, the wall and the power pole. Now it was time to block in the colours. I started by using Tamiya's neutral grey but felt it was a little bit too dark so I went back over the parts with uh, Life Colours Italian light blue and that worked really nicely. I thought it was a good base for all the uh, all the tiles. In fact, I ended up using it across the entire base. One happy uh, accident, if you like, was I was looking for some life color thinner and couldn't find it quickly to hand. So I ended up using some Mission Model Thinner and that sprayed beautifully with the life color paint. So if you have a bit of trouble with life color paints in your collection, you might want to try the Mission Model Thinner. Certainly worked for me. After I blocked out all the primary colours, I then was ready for the detail work, so I used Life Colours Stone Grey Paint Set as the colours. I mixed a few of these to make them a little bit lighter, thinned them down with some Mission Models Thinner, and then just used a 0.3 airbrush to paint some of the uh, pavers. The 
using the uh, Mini Art Box Art for inspiration. I stuck to more shades of grey for the main pavers and then for the walkways I went to more of a brown tone. Basically to get this effect I just applied multiple levels of airbrushing with very heavily thin paint so I got the right sort of colours and shades I wanted. Once I was basically happy with the colours, it was time to apply a gloss so I could then uh, go ahead and apply a wash. So I used some Vallejo Polyurethane Gloss Varnish, uh, thinned about 50-50 with their Vallejo Thinner. This is uh, quite a good gloss for this sort of work. I wouldn't use it for doing things like car kits and things like that, but if you just want a nice gloss coat for your decals or for, well, washes like this, it works really well and it's quite affordable. Now initially I started off by putting the uh, Tamiya wash, the grey wash in between all the pavers but it didn't really give me the contrast I was after. So I had a look through my stash and I had a Vallejo dark grey wash and I tried that after this and it worked really really well. It gave me just exactly the right contrast I wanted. On the other hand the Tamiya brown wash worked really well for the pavers on the sidewalk. Now it was time to block in the colour for the wall. I used Mission Models Insignia White, which worked terrific. If you want to know more about Mission Model paints, they really do have a great technical section which explains how their paints work. It's worth checking out. For the bricks on the wall, I used Life Colours uh, Blue Grey, Italian Blue Grey. It's the same paint that I use for the pavers. I used Ammo Mig's dark grey wash for the mortar on the bricks and then gave all the bricks a light coat of the Vallejo dark grey wash. For the tiles on top of the wall it's back to Tamir's brown wash. While I was doing this project Ammo Mig launched their Ammo Shaders range and uh, I was quite impressed by the demo so I did what all good modelers do and I ordered the complete set without any more pretense. So it was time to try and justify that expense by using it on the wall. I put a couple of drops in my Iwata airbrush with a 0.3 needle, a reasonably low air pressure and gave it a go and it works fantastic. It's quickly becoming one of my favourite products. Actually I guess that's a good thing because I got the complete set. Anyway, you'll see some of the streaks I'm putting down the wall there. Later on I enhance those with an AK Interactive Weathering Pencil. With most of the weathering done for the wall, I sealed it in with a coat of Alclad 2 Light Sheen. And then I also used some AK Interactive Track Primer to block in the colour for the groundwork. I used some tufts from the Army Painter range for the grass. For the back of the wall I used some PVA glue on the groundwork and then sprinkled some uh, various grasses I had for my model railways. I'm not sure what particular brand they were, they were in just a bag. But I also added a couple of those tufts again from the Army Painter range as well and just sprinkled a bit on there till I was reasonably happy with it. Some big concrete dust was used around the end of the wall and was fixed in place using some Wilder Fixer. I 
Well that was the wall done, so now it was time to turn my attention to the power pump. I painted the power pole uh, to me as dark panzer grey and then used this life colour pigment and colour set to add a bit of light weathering. I used fuse wire for the broken power lines and then gave it a light coat of Vallejo black primer. Finally I used some uh, weathering powders from Tamiya just to add a little bit of contrast to the wires and also I put a little bit of it down onto the actual power pole itself for some dry brushing. So here's the final product and of course here's the box art in the back that inspired me. This was a really fun project, I really enjoyed doing all the weathering and the vacuum form stuff turned out to be not quite as scary as I'd first thought. Thanks for watching, I hope you really enjoyed following along with the build process and we'll catch you on the next video.